Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to solve separable differential equations, and I'm going to do that with this example here, dy dx equals x times e to the negative y. And I wanted to show you a differential equation separation of variables example problem with solution because this is actually one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description where you can check that out. It's only a few bucks, it's available for instant download. You can go grab yourself a copy of that right now and then come back and watch the rest of this video and I'll show you exactly how to use the formula that's on my study guide. So let's jump into it. Really with these separable differential equations, you know, if we're gonna think about how we wanna solve separable differential equations, really what that comes down to, as the name suggests, is separating our variables, right? So basically, what we wanna do is manipulate the differential equation so that all of our x's are on one side of the equation and all of our y's are on the other side of the equation. <clears throat> now, the weird thing about it is that even includes the x and the y stuck within our dy dx. What we're actually gonna do is separate the dx on one side with the x's and separate the y on the dy on one side with all the y's. So right off the bat looking at the equation, where your dy dx is, so in this case we have our dy dx on the left side of our equation, that pretty much tells you right off the bat <clears throat> that we want to get all of our y's over onto the side of the equation where the dy dx is. Because what we want to do is move the dx over to the other side of the equation so that the dy and the dx are not within fractions. We want them just to be kind of, we want to get everything on one line basically so that we can integrate both sides of our equation eventually. And I'll show you what that looks like too. But what that tells us is what we want to do first of all is think about basically multiplying both sides of our equation by dx. Okay, so the reason why is because that is going to cancel our dx's over here and we're just going to be left on the left side of our equation with dy and then over here we're going to have x e to the negative y all times dx. So now we have our dy by itself on the left side of the equation. On the right side of our equation we have some x's and some y's, right? We have our, an x, we have a dx, we also have a y. So what we want to do is we want to get the y over to the left side of the equation where the dy is. Well, that's where the formula on my study guide comes into play. Because what that formula says is we want to basically get this to be in a form where we have some function of x times some function of y. Fortunately for us, that was already given. That's already the form that we have here. We don't really have to do any manipulating so that we just have our x's and our y's separated to have something with x times something with y. We already have that. So what we can do is divide all of the stuff with a y in it over to the other side of the equation. And when we do that, it's gonna cancel the y on the right side and we're just going to be left with x times dx. And then over here, we're going to have 1 over e to the negative y times dy. Well, 1 over e to the negative y, having a, a negative exponent like that, you can make the exponent positive by, move, by flipping it over the fraction. So in this case, our negative y powers on the denominator, we can bring it up into the numerator by making it into a positive power. So e to the y is the same as 1 over e to the negative y. Those are equivalent to each other. Then we still have our dy here. And then on the other side, we still have our x dx. So once we've got our y and dy on one side of our equation, our x and dx on the other side, all we have to do is integrate both sides. So we can just put an integral sign at the front of that. And what that tells us, our dy is indicating that we're going to integrate with respect to y on the left side of the equation. And the dx is indicating that we're going to integrate with respect to x on the right side of the equation. Now we just have these two pretty simple integrals that we can integrate and then solve for y. So the integral of e to the y with respect to y, so this respect, with respect to y is telling us that we're going to treat y as our variable. That tells us the integral of e to the y is just e to the y. And then the integral of x with respect to x, now treating x as our variable on this side of the equation, the integral of x, we could use the power rule. So we'll raise the power by 1 and then divide by our new power. 
That's just the integrating power rule. And then we're also going to have a plus C over here. Technically, you could put a plus C on both sides of your equation. You know, when you integrate, you want to put a plus C. But if we put a plus C over here, we're eventually going to want to move it over to the side of our equation, which has X, right? Because Y is going to be the thing that we want to solve for. We know that because our initial differential equation had the Y on top and the X on the bottom. So whatever's on top is the variable that you want to solve for, that you want to get all by itself at the very end. So since we want to solve for y, we would just have to move that constant of integration over to the right side. So moving some unknown constant of integration and combining it, you know, simplifying by combining it with this constant of integration is just going to give us some new unknown constant. So we can just call that new unknown constant c and kind of skip that whole step of putting a plus c on both sides. Now what we want to do is get y all by itself. So the question is, how do we get a y by itself if it's stuck up in the exponent like that? Well, the easiest way to do this would be by taking the log with the base of the log being whatever the base of this exponent is. So in this case, log base e, which is just natural log of both sides of our equation. So we're going to take natural log of the left side. Uh, not in a lot of room over here to write this, but natural log of the right side the natural log and the e are going to cancel and we're just going to get y equals natural log of x squared over 2 plus c and now we've solved for y so this is going to be the solution to the initial separable differential equation that we were given and of course we were not given an initial condition this is not an initial value problem so having a plus c in here is going to be the best we're going to be able to do in this case so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, hit that thumbs up button down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so you're notified of all my new videos, and I'm sure together we'll be able to get you some great grades in your calculus class. So be sure to check back for the next video. Thanks, and see you next time.